Hey everyone, today in this video we're going to take a look at a channel strip that sounds far more expensive than it actually is. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. I really appreciate you guys being here. Now today in this video, we're taking a look and listen to the SPL Channel One Mark III, which is really impressive sounding in my opinion. Full transparency, SPL sent me this to test out to potentially make content on. Now with all of my gear reviews here on YouTube, I will not make a video on a piece of gear if I'm not willing to put it on real records that I'm working on that are gonna get released. And I'm not willing to cut corners for my client's sake just to put a video out on a piece of gear. So the fact that a video is getting made right now, the fact that you're watching this, means that I definitely love it. I've already put it on records. But at the end of this video, I will touch on my favorite things to use it on and whether or not it's staying here in this room. Now, before we jump into some sound examples here, which we will in just one minute, I will say that it is a very impressive box. It feels impressive, it looks impressive, it sounds impressive, it's like classy sounding. Like I, I struggled to find the words to describe how I feel about this, but like classy and expensive sounding is, is how I would classify this box. There is a few things that I think that that makes it a really good option for a couple of different genres and a couple of different sources, even though it, man, it sounds great on everything I've tried it on, but there's a couple things that I think it will really, really shine in. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. As always, I'll put links down below to go see this, to see the prices, specs, pick one up if you decide to. Be sure to hit the links in the description if you if you decide to pick one of these up and I really appreciate it. Okay, let's jump right in and take a listen to the SPL Channel One Mark III. Okay, let me walk you through the controls and features of the SPL Channel One Mark III. Now, if you do wanna skip ahead and just hear some sound examples, uh, right here, you can go to this time right here, and that's where we get into the sound examples. But there's a lot of really interesting design choices and interesting things and controls on this box. So stay tuned and let, let's get work our way through this and then we will get to some sound examples. Now the first thing that I wanna say about this is my impression of this when, when turning knobs, when watching the meter, when just looking at it in person, this thing just oozes class. It oozes sophistication, it feels really expensive, and it sounds really expensive. It has the sounds to match, uh, and so we're gonna get to all that, but let's jump right in from the top. You've got uh, this switch right here, which is uh, between mic A, mic B, and line instrument. Now what's cool about this is you can hook up two microphones to this at the same time. I do this for every single singer I ever record. Uh, I put up multiple microphones and we test them out to see which microphone suits their voice the best, something that I recommend everyone do. This lets you run two microphones through the exact same chain, which is awesome rather than unhooking and hooking up cables and it's just right here on this switch and the line instrument also if you're mixing with this like we're going to be doing today there's a line input on the back uh, an xlr so that way you can run line inputs uh, and there's an instrument input on the front here i've recorded bass through this direct and it sounds just classy and expensive and and i don't really it just awesome. Now another interesting thing is you could actually hook up an output of another microphone preamp to this line input and then run everything through, you know, all the tube saturation, all the different things that we're going to get to with a different preamp if you wanted a different color, but you wanted all of this same stuff as well, which is a very cool feature. You've got independent phantom controls for microphone A and microphone B. Your preamp input gain, you've got a pad switch, a polarity switch, and a high pass, and two tube saturation all on the preamp section. Now the tube saturation is interesting. It's on a relay, uh, and so when it's all the way counterclockwise like this, it is off. And as you turn it on, there's a relay that clicks. See if you can hear this. 
there's a relay that clicks and puts tube saturation in, and then it goes from very, very subtle all the way up to halfway dirty. Man, that knob feels good. So it's cool that that's completely bypassed. Now the de is something that is very, very interesting on this unit because it is not just a frequency dependent compressor. This de actually flips the polarity of the sibilance and cancels out. So the more you dial this knob in, the more of the reversed polarity sibilance it's feeding back into the signal, canceling out those S's. It's very natural sounding. There's no pumping, there's no like artifacts. It's really, really interesting. And unlike anything else I've ever seen, now you've got two frequency ranges here, a low, which I think is centered around six or seven K and then a high, which is centered somewhere around 10K, I believe. And those are uh, independent of each other or you can have both on at the same time. A lot of times what you'll experience is different singers have different sibilance ranges and also depending on how the singer sings. The ch, -ch, -ch and the s, -s, s are often in two different frequency ranges. And so you can control both independently or uh, both at the same time with this de which is very cool. Now you do have this little LED here telling you when sibilance is being detected. This is not how much it is compressing or reducing the S's because it's not compressing the S's. This is just telling you that sibilance is being detected and then when that light is on, the higher up this knob is, the less sibilance you will get. Next up, Transient Designer, which is possibly the thing that SPL is the most famous for. It kind of created its own entire product category more than anything else. This is not just a compressor, this is program dependent. If you've never used a transient designer, uh, I really would love it if you did. Uh, but to be honest with you, in my personal opinion, the plugins don't hold a candle to the hardware. The hardware just is so much more effortless in my opinion. Uh, I absolutely love the hardware. Attack does exactly what you think it would. The higher up you turn the knob, the more of the front end of a sound you're gonna get, and the lower you turn the knob, the less of that front end, that beginning of any sound you're gonna get. And sustain does the exact opposite. The higher up you turn this knob, the more length you're getting on anything, whether it's a snare drum or a vocal or anything else, and the uh, more you turn this knob down, the less length you're getting on anything, and it works on everything. It is surprisingly useful on vocals in addition to obviously all sorts of percussive elements. In the center section here, you have got a really, really beautiful VU meter, like classy, Just it just oozes class, the way that it moves, the way that it looks, just classy. Uh, and it, it works really well. So you've got a, an adjustment here. I've been leaving it in plus six because when I'm in plus six, the output of this is hitting my converters about where I want it to when we're in the, you know, minus one to plus two range on this meter. That's about where I want it to be. Uh, and so you can change that based on this switch here. And then also for the VU meter, you've got gain reduction. So you can view how much compression you're getting. You've got input and output. Even these switches feel really good and expensive. Now you've got a couple buttons here to rearrange the order of the entire channel strip. First button is tube post, which is gonna move your tube saturation to the end of the chain. This is where I personally always want my saturation. I like, I like sculpting the entire signal, taming the dynamics, getting the frequency range how I like it, and then adding saturation. That's how I mix, and that's how I've always mixed, and having that button is beautiful. Next up, you've got a button to move the EQ to before the transient designer. Now this is also really cool because I prefer my EQ before compression. I always have, uh, I prefer my compressor to see a finished signal when possible. And so the fact that we can move the EQ to pre-transient designer, so that way the transient designer reacts to what the EQ is set to, love that, awesome, makes this so much more versatile. We move over to the compressor. Now, at first glance, you would probably assume this is just a two-knob compressor. It is a two-knob compressor, but it is unlike any other two-knob compressor I've ever used, that's for sure. This is a dual VCA compressor, and I am not overly technical, but as I understand it, they're using the first VCA to control everything, all the wavelengths on the minus side, 
and they're using the second VCA to control all the waves on the positive side. And then they combine at the end of the signal path, uh, and so that way neither VCA is working very hard. And that's very interesting because it does sound pretty darn effortless, and it is also makes it a program-dependent compressor. I believe the ratio is fixed at like 2.5 to 1, but attack and release are uh, completely variable, and they are program dependent, which means it's just a very nice, pleasing sounding compressor. Uh, and then you have makeup gain for your compressor and an on off switch here. Next up, two band e parametric EQ. Now these are proportional Q EQs, which means if you are just wanting a little bit, if you wanna just add a little bit of top end, couple dB of top end or a couple dB of mid range or low end, it's a very wide uh, bell curve on the EQ. And as you turn it more in the boost or the cut direction, that curve gets narrower and narrower. So that means that even though this is only a two band, it is very good at just general tone shaping, you just want something a little crispier or you just want something a little warmer, this does a really, really good job at that, as well as fixing problems. Like if you've got like 400 hertz in a, a kick drum or in a snare drum kind of drives me nuts. So, you know, when you do that, you're actually just solving the 400 hertz things or whatever you deem necessary for what you're working on. It's a very useful tone shaping EQ. Then you get on to the air band, which is a coil inductor EQ. Now I've said this before on other videos, I am a big, big fan of hardware coil inductor EQs. The reason is they just sound incredibly natural. You, know, you can just ring them to death and they just sound smooth and natural and wonderful all the time. And so it's, I don't know what frequency point this is. It feels like it's very high, maybe maybe eight, somewhere between 17 and 20 K, somewhere like way up there. Uh, and so air band, this makes this whole EQ in addition to the high pass filter over here, makes the whole EQ really, really powerful. You've got an off and on switch to turn your EQ on and off. And then you've got a mute switch for when you're unhooking and hooking up microphones and whatnot. Okay, so this is a song that I'm producing by an artist by the name of Brenna Bone. I'll put Brenna's info all down below. Go follow her if you like this song or if you like this style of stuff. This song is not out yet. It is not mixed yet. So these are the raw tracks that you are hearing right now. Uh, so I'm just gonna walk you through. I'm just gonna dial this thing in on her voice and we'll see where we get to at the end. Now I will say one of the kind of criticisms that I have on this that I, I wish that this had was a master bypass to bypass everything. Obviously you can't bypass the microphone preamp, but I would love it if this had a master bypass to bypass everything all at once. It does not, you just have uh, individual switches for every section. So we'll do our best to like get all the way through this and then turn everything off and see the difference that it made. Here we go. I know that we both got past. I don't bring it up. I pass. You know We're gonna add saturation last. About all those years I spent in the rough. Grabbing anything that kind of felt like love. Shockingly good myself through that hell, giving it all to someone else. If I'd known you were coming to save me, baby, I would have saved myself. I know that we both got past. I don't bring it up, and you know not to ask about all those years I spent in the rough. Anything that kind of felt like love. If I'd known that you were out there waiting to take me home, I'd take back the time I wasted putting myself through that hell, giving it all to someone else. If I'd known you were coming to save me, baby. That we both got past I don't bring it up And you know 
not to ask about all those years of spinning the rough, grabbing anything that Here comes the air. felt like love. Get some thickness I'd in this. You were coming to save me, baby. I would have saved myself. I some know upper mid range. We both got past. I don't, I don't really like that. And you know not to ask about all those years of spinning the rough. Grabbing anything that kind of felt like love. So there's two more ways that you could go in this song. Is adding more crisp and sizzle or adding some mid-range like some 1K. Out there waiting to take me home. I take back the time I wasted putting myself through that hell. Giving it all to someone else. If I'd known you were coming to save me, baby. Alright, let's work on some tube saturation. I would have saved myself. I know that we both got past. I don't bring it up. And you know not to ask about all those years of spinning the rough. Grabbing anything that kind of felt like love. Just adds density. That you were out there waiting to take me home I take back the time I wasted Putting myself through that hell Giving it all to someone else If I'd known You were coming to save me, baby Okay, let's take a listen to some snare drum This is gonna be awesome You can hear how that just adds to the, the snap and the crack of that snare drum. Let's go for just a little bit of compression. Just a tiny bit. Now, I always like to add a bunch of thud to my snare drums. That's one of my things that I do. So let's add a bunch of 125. Let's also do a high pass. Add some presence somewhere around 4K. And of course the air. Driving. Let's pull that down a little bit. And because our EQ is set pre-transient designer, it's also affecting how much compression we get. Now let's go for some saturation. dirty. Now I'm going to bypass this in Pro Tools so you can really hear the difference. Like, like that's crazy. That's so, that's so polished sounding. It's so, like, classy sounding. Oh man. I think in a word to me, that's what I. That's what sums this box up. Is just classy. It's just, 
It just sounds expensive and I love it. Let's reset this and listen to something else. Okay, let's take a listen to some bass guitar. Here we go. We can get all the way down here to uh, about 50 hertz and really give this some thickness, as well as giving this some serious presence in like the 1.5 range. Let's try the de on this. So it's very good at detecting sibilance and not not detecting things that aren't sibilance. Saturation. Maybe a little too much saturation. Let's take a listen to this and bypass it on and off so you can hear the difference. I mean, to me, that's exactly what I'd be going for in the mix, all done with just this channel strip. Okay, so next let's listen to some acoustic guitar. Now to me, especially with the Transient Designer, vocals, snare drum, and acoustic guitar are where it's at. And so to me, between uh, snare drum, vocals, and uh, bass guitar and acoustic guitar, that lets me decide how I feel about pretty much any piece of gear. So here we go, acoustic guitar. Transient designer first. See how much of those pick strokes we can bring out. A significant amount. Let's add some uh, sustain. Too much, obviously. Had so much life. This is so much better than the plugin, in my opinion. Like the plugin's awesome, but that's so transparent and so like just natural sounding. Compression. Let's get rid of high pass. Let's turn transient designer off. So the compressor with the transient designer is a bit much because I'm adding so much attack, it's making the compressor pump a little if they're both running. So that might be something else that would be cool to see if we could reverse the order here. Uh, but for me, I think I like the transient designer better. I like what that does more than I like what the compressor does. Let me know in the comments down below what you prefer. Yeah, we're gonna stay with Transient Designer for this. Let's go. That was too much. Okay, here we go. EQ in. Air. Like 
that's kind of ridiculous on acoustic guitar. Let's get some like 400-ish hertz in there. We're just gonna do some tone shaping here. And then like a, like 1.5K. We've had saturation in this whole time, without saturation. That's awesome. Absolutely love it. Now, I hope a couple things came through in this video. One, I hope the the classiness and the expensiveness of the way that this thing sounds came through the YouTube audio compression. I hope you could hear that uh, because that is that is what is the overwhelming sensation that I get when I use this unit. Now, overall thoughts, what is this really good for? I think this is really good for a huge variety of genres and instruments and vocals. And I think if you really wanted just a single do-it-all channel strip at a very high level, this would be a great option. However, there are a couple things that I think that this would really stand out as. One, I think rap vocals, because it has the transient designer in it, being able to increase the attack, it would increase the percussiveness of rap vocals. I think that that transient designer on rap vocals would be just absolutely incredible. I also think any sort of pop vocals, this thing will crush at, because it just has that kind of clean, but like dense and powerful still, but like really expensive, polished sounding like I, to me, this is a pop vocal monster or really any vocal that you want to sound like that, that super polished, like expensive -y sounding thing. I'm, I should put a counter for how many times I've said expensive. I think this also absolutely crushes on any sort of percussion, literally any percussive element, whether it's just shaker and tambourine or kick drum or snare drum or anything like that. I think this would be incredible on piano. I really love how you can flip microphones so that way you can test out an AB2 microphones, which is something that I do in every single session with a singer. I think that that's great to be able to do that. I also really like that you just have a clean preamp out that's gonna give you just the preamp if that's what you wanna capture because this is, a, this is a really good sounding preamp. Now, I've tracked bass guitar through this with incredible results. I've tracked some vocals through this with incredible results. I think the thing that I'm most excited about using it on is mixing vocals. Like, that's the thing that, at least for the next handful of songs, which answers the question, yes, I'm keeping this. It's absolutely staying here because I think it's incredible and it fills a hole in my rig that I, I don't yet have, which is what I've said a bunch of times already. That like super polished, poppy, like expensive-y, kind of clean, but not lacking mojo vibe. And I don't really have anything like that. Everything that I have has tons of color and tons of mojo. And I, I really did need something that is in this ballpark. So I think at least for the next handful of songs, it is going to be my main vocal channel strip. Uh, it probably won't be the only thing on vocals. There will probably be a vocal compressor as well, because I just, I compress vocals really hard. Um, so we'll see how that works out and I'll keep you guys updated. If you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, be sure to follow me on Instagram. There's a link down below because that's where I give a lot of ongoing updates with stuff and when I'm still using stuff and when new stuff comes in and like how, what I'm using for what I do a lot of that on Instagram all the time because it just doesn't warrant a video all that often. I think I'm becoming a really big fan of this brand. The SPL Big that I did over a year ago, that was a that was a true game changer for my mixes. It's still on every single mix since then. The Vitalizer that I just recently did a video on, I think it's absolutely incredible. And it does a thing with softening the bass and opening up a mix in a way that I just, I don't have any other tools that do that. This channel strip, again, is like, 
it's a thing that I don't have and I really, really love what it does. And I, I guess this is making me an SPL fanboy. I mean, you guys are hearing this stuff, so you be the judge for yourselves and drop me a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in the future because I'm, I'm loving all this stuff, this SPL stuff that I've tried out so far. It's, it's really good. Don't forget links down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.